Hi everybody. I wanted to jump on real quick um, to go over one thing that seems to be uh, a problem for some of you guys getting the tree rings that you want or the swirls, whatever you would like to call it. And the biggest part or the biggest error I'm seeing um, is not having your base paint done at the right time or at the right thickness. So I kind of want to explain to you why the base paint is so important in this technique. Um, because without it, you're not going to get the results that you want. If you're trying to get some of the things kind of like what I've done with it, you can only get that if your base paint is fluid enough. So it really needs to be a watered down version of paint. In addition to that, it needs to be done right before you're ready to pour. Don't put your base paint down and then go and mix your colors. Because by the time you get back, this paint will have thickened up and it won't be as fluid as you need to allow that pour to flow. Because that's really key in keeping those rings intact is you want that paint to act as uh, like ice does for ice skating. It's very smooth. You can go across it nicely. And if you were to put something else on your feet, it wouldn't be as, as nice. Or if you were trying to, you know, ice skate on water or mud, it just wouldn't work. So that's about the best description I can come up with. Uh, with to describe it. Now, the way to tell if your paint is watery enough, for me at least, uh, it's, it's one way that you almost can't miscommunicate because by me saying it has to be watered down, that's my version of what watered down is. You may have an entirely different idea of what watered down is. So the best way to do it is when you're pouring that base paint on your canvas or your board and you're smoothing it out, you should be able to see it as you're leaving lines in it. They should disappear fairly quickly because when it's uh, watered down the way it is, it wants to even out quickly. So you're not going to see big globs of paint that are sitting there for a minute and you have to go back and smooth them out again. So they really should disappear pretty quickly when you're going over it to smooth it. The other way to tell is when you're going to your edges, the paint should really fall off easily. It should just slide right down the side, but still provide some coverage. <clears throat> so you should still be able to see that white paint on the edges of your canvas or your board, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be thick to provide coverage. So as long as you can tell that it has white paint on it, and if that means you can still see the wood or the canvas underneath, but it's white, that's perfect. Now, if you pour it over the edge and the white isn't staying hardly at all, it's too watery. If you put that over the edge and it's dripping, but it's dripping slowly and it's it looks like a thick teardrop and it's just dropping very slowly, that's far too thick. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I also kind of want to show you the difference uh, leaving something in, leaving paint a long time out in the air. So I'll do like a quarter size. There we go. So I'm going to do a quarter size. I'm going to let it sit there for a few minutes, pretending that, you know, we are just going to wipe our board down. Uh, this won't be exact because this is thicker, so it's going to take a little longer for it to thicken up. But when air hits your paint, it does thicken up. Do you ever have those moments where you've mixed up all your colors, they were the right consistency, and right when you go to pour in your cup to layer them, you went, what is going on? This is too thick. How did that happen? It's because you have air in your paint now it's exposed to the air which is going to thicken it up you once you have something liquid like this it wants to dry so because of the environment we're pouring in it wants to dry so the second it hits the air it's going to start drying a bit 
because you don't have it in a closed container anymore. So just think of that uh, when you go to pour. The longer it hits the air, the less fluid it's going to be, which means you're going to get some designs that you might not like. Now, if you like the zigzag lines or the scalloped edges that when you try to tilt to fix them, you've got like a V in your pour, um, hey, by all means, do it. Make it your own. That's what art is all about. They don't all have to be like mine or like anyone else's. Um, if you do want to try to get some of the effects that I've gotten, like the uh, the ones that I kept intact, like the rose, or some people thought it was like a those swirls on a weather map that the newsman uses, or, uh, oh my goodness, or an agate, or whatever, any of the things that I've done. If you're trying to get those type of rings and lines, then you have to make sure that your base paint is just so and that it's not drying out because of the air um, because that's going to create too much of a grip on your canvas. If you're going to leave that paint out too long, you may as well pour on a blank canvas. I mean, really, because it grips. Think of paint as your, or excuse me, think of your pour that you're doing to try to create these rings um, as needing something to glide on because without it your paint is going to grip your canvas that's what the paint is designed to do right when we paint something it's supposed to stay there so the difference with this process is we don't want the paint to stay where we poured it we want it to kind of flow out so if you pour in the center that should continue to be a ring if you are level it should absolutely look like a record, not only with the fine lines, but also in shape. You shouldn't lose that. And if you're losing that, that means that your base coat is either too thin or too thick, because it could be either, depending on what happens, or your paint is far too thick. Um, that can happen too. The difference is, if you have your paint too thick, your pore, but you have your base coat fluid enough, this paint will still spread out evenly if you tip slowly because it still glides on this bottom layer. Now the problem that you see though is that people have this, their pore too thick and this base paint has dried somewhat. So they're struggling to get that and what that creates are jagged edges because now you're trying to tip it and tip it and tip it, make it go somewhere that it doesn't want to go because it's thickening up. If this was slick, and if it was very fluid, the base coat, that paint would move more easily. I hope that makes sense. So we've poured this out. Uh, it's been out for, I don't know what, a minute or so. And then I'm just going to pour the same size right there. And now I'm going to tip. you see that? That's the difference in pouring right away and that's what happens if you don't. You really have to work this pour and that's where the jagged edges will come from. So don't torch your base paint. Don't leave it sitting and make sure you pour or put your base layer down exactly right before you are about to pour. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you guys and I guarantee if you follow that you will find more successes than failures with this method. Um, that is the biggest mistake that I'm seeing. Even some people that have sent me links to others video saying hey look at this look look so I look and while they're happy with their pores good for them but if they're trying to get the same results or similar similar results to what I've gotten or some of the other artists out there that I've seen that have done amazing with this process then you have to follow this I mean this is the same white paint I poured no difference.
other than the timing of that. So just keep that in mind, okay? And I hope that helps you all. I have seen some other, uh, some other issues with some people that aren't getting the results that they want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing little videos. Uh, this one I understand it's in a portrait mode. It's with my phone, so it's not a professional video. I just wanted to hop on for a minute and share this piece because I know some people are getting frustrated and that's not what art is about. You're supposed to have fun and enjoy it. And if you're not getting the results that you need, I can almost tell you what it is you're doing or not doing just by looking at your pore. So if you want me to do that, I am happy to do that. Just send me a link to it or you know, send me a, a photo and ask me what you were trying to get and how do I get it and I'll do the best I can to answer the questions and to show you. So I'll probably do a couple more of these videos just based on what I've seen so far. But some of you, oh my God, your work is absolute stunning I love it and I'm loving some of the variations of it so keep going um, that's fun we can make it our own it does not have to be exactly like anyone else's that's the joy of art isn't it um, the last thing I wanted to kind of address is there was a fella today that posted after I posted my hey thank you and I had no idea this was going to get so popular and all that yada yada stuff, which was heartfelt. Um, he posted on there that this process has been around for a very long time. In the initial video that I did, I believe I said in there, I was just so excited to get the results I got that I just wanted to share with everyone. And although I felt like I came up with it, there may have been someone else that also did it at some point. And if there was, I apologize and just let me know who it is. I don't want to take credit for anything that I didn't do. Heck, I have a hard enough time taking credit for things I did do because I'm not that type of person anymore. Um, you know, I used to be in big business and I haven't been doing that in many years and I just don't need that kind of stress or acknowledgement. I'm too old at this point to worry about that kind of stuff. I'm just into art because I love it. I've been doing this flow art or fluid art or whatever everybody's calling it uh, for three, maybe four weeks. And I thought, ooh, this looks easy. Yeah, for a creative person, I'm going to nail this stuff. Let's go. And then it was wah, wah, wah. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? And that's when I found... Uh, the two different groups one of them i think i thought it i think it was cheeto cheeto designs that i saw um and started watching his videos and i thought that was really cool and then somehow i came across uh two different Anne marie's and i watched theirs and i thought all of them were beautiful they were all gorgeous but for me i just wanted i was looking for something else and i couldn't find it i looked everywhere trying to find something that I saw in my head and how can I get it out. I couldn't find it. So that night I went and I just sat here in my little editing slash photograph slash art room and I started playing with paint. And then I went, oh my god, this is it. This is, this is exactly what I want. I have to tell everybody. I'm so freaking excited. And I I wanted to share it because I was trying to share my excitement, not because I was sharing to get some kind of credit, because never in a million years would I think with all the gorgeous art out there and the amazing artists that I've seen that anyone would even care what I did. But everybody has been so supportive of each other. I'm like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to post this. I'm so excited. Nobody that... I know in this house really cares about if I get something cool with my art or not or if I great take a great photograph that I'm just amazed by or if I draw something that just amazes me they're like yeah, yeah you know sure I wanted to share it with people that I knew would understand that excitement that was the only reason for it I promise you 
I had nothing to gain by saying I came up with this, hey, look at me. I don't, I don't need that. I don't like to be on video. I don't like to have my picture taken. I don't like my voice. Trust me, I did not want to be in any type of spotlight situation. Um, I just wanted to share my excitement. And if someone else that was struggling to have that this is it moment, um, I wanted to give them one other thing that maybe they would feel the same way about that I did. So anyway, this gentleman said that this had been around for a long time and there was this artist, now his name escapes me already, I'll, I'll post it, um, that he said has been doing it for decades. So I said, I, you know what, I had no idea, I didn't do this for any kind of accolades or anything, I just did it from excitement, pure and sheer joy and excitement. Um, so I looked up that artist and it's, it's not the same. Um, he does things on a much grander scale. And if he were to use this swirling technique, his hands would fall off doing what he does. So it's not the same. I could see how the end result might appear similar-ish. But they're very different in many ways. Including the end result, if it's done the way I do it. So I asked this fella if he could send me some links maybe to this gentleman's earlier works um, because maybe he started off doing this and then he just morphed it into something larger on a grander scale. I don't know. But with as many people that have, that have contacted me and seen this and artists in other countries and, and artists that have been around for a while, if they haven't told me yet that this has been out there, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know who to credit then if it's not, you know, if it's not something I came up with. I don't care about the credit. I don't. I shared this because I was excited. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I don't market my art. I, I do graphite drawings and I've done that for three years. I've done for photo, uh, photography for three years. I was a late bloomer. 52 years old, never drew a thing in my life, never took a picture, definitely never did any of, of any of this painting stuff. And for whatever reason, when my grandbaby was uh, going to be born, I said, you know what, I want to learn how to do stuff so I can do stuff with her. So she can say, look, at that's, ah, that's my granny. And she drew this with me. Or when I'm long gone, she can look at a picture that I took of her and her mother and say, my granny took that picture of me and my mom. Sorry. Whew. But that's why I started uh, into that stuff. I had no idea I could even do it. Go figure. Somehow I became a natural at it. Um, and I just do it for enjoyment. If I were to market it and I wanted to promote, promote myself, I, you know, I would have been doing that for the last three years. I didn't. Um, people have bought prints from me. They have bought some of my drawings. But it's not because I marketed it. It's because it's friends and family and people somehow come across me or come across a picture and they contact me. But I absolutely have nothing to gain from this. I didn't know what to call it. People were asking me for a name. No idea. I spoke with a couple artists um, over Messenger. I'm like, I don't know what to call it. What do we call it? And we came up with the swirl technique or the dirty swirl or the tree ring thing. So that's where those names morphed from. Um, it wasn't by design that I said, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to share this. I'm going to get these likes. I'm going to do... Who would ever think this many people from all around the world would want to look at something, somebody that's only been doing art for three weeks, this type of art for three weeks, and say, hey, I want to do what you're doing. That would never occur to any normal human being. So, with that said, um, if there is someone out there that you know 
is doing this technique, please let me know. I will be happy to credit them. I never gave credit to myself. This has all been by word of mouth or email or social media and people sharing it. It's not me out promoting it. It's It just happened. And I am amazed by it. I really am. I'm overwhelmed by it. I'm amazed by it. And whoever's technique it is doesn't matter to me. It doesn't. Although I will give them credit because I just don't, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I enjoy doing art. I felt good about something that I did. I shared it. Others feel good about it. And to me, that's what art is. So I really, I really truly have, I mean, I have no other words. I don't know what else to say. So I, I hope this helped you. I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the art wherever it came from, the process. Uh, just have fun with it. And if I can help in any way, because I can identify what's going wrong just on, because I've done it. Uh, when I was coming up with this, trust me, I had flops. I would never have posted them because they were horrible. And that's how I learned about the base paint needing to be just so. So I can tell you, just based on what I'm seeing, you know, what to do to try to make it better or make it more like mine. I shouldn't say better because even people that feel they failed at art, you didn't because some of it's beautiful anyway. So uh, I'm done with the sad sack stuff. Sorry about that. I get emotional about why I started and my grandbaby. So um, I hope this helps. And I will try to post uh, another couple videos in the next few days about other things that I'm seeing. And I hope it helps some of you. If not, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks, everyone.